There are a number of devout theists who do believe in evolution, who do try to square it with undirected evolution, people like Francis Collins or Ken Miller, but they're really on the fringe of uh, the modern field of biology, especially those disciplines that are most impacted by Darwin's theory. There are lots of scientists who are theists, but they don't happen to be in Darwinian biology. Nearly 95% of biologists in the National Academy of Sciences say they are atheists or agnostics. Over 60% of all college biology faculty in America say they are atheists or agnostics. Nearly 90% of leading evolutionary scientists, according to a survey published in 2003, nearly 90% of leading evolutionary scientists say that they don't believe in God or that they reject uh, the idea that life is after death and they don't think that evolution is guided. So this idea that theistic evolution is a live option in the scientific community is really uh, more a media myth than anything else. Now why is that? Why is it that so few Darwinian biologists happen to believe in God? Well, some would say, well, there's no connection here, that people like Richard Dawkins, who says that Darwinism helps you become an intellectually fulfilled atheist, that he's just talking out, you know, inside his hat, he, he doesn't know what he's saying, and that there really is no connection. But in fact, if you think about it, there is a connection. If you really believe that the evidence shows that life is the product of an undirected process, that there was no design in the way that human beings came about, and that the evidence shows that, of course, that it makes more plausible the idea of atheism, or certainly agnosticism. I wouldn't say that it directly proves atheism, but it certainly there is a logical connection. If you think that nature uh, provides evidence that we are not the product of design, but we're just the product of an undirected process, that sure makes atheism more plausible. So the idea that there's no rational connection between unguided Darwinism and atheism is really just poppycock. Uh, second of all, you have people claim that Darwinism is the universal acid that cuts through not just traditional religious belief, but also traditional moral beliefs. And again, you have many theistic evolutionists saying, oh, this isn't true, Darwinism really doesn't have that impact. But in fact, if again, you accept a Darwinian account of morality, it really does have a serious impact of how you view morals. Uh, according to Darwin's own account in The Descent of Man, Morals developed through the same process of natural selection acting on random variations as everything else, as every other human trait. Well, if that's the case, then basically everything you see in nature, whether it be the maternal instinct, which might be good, or infanticide, which I would hope that most people would think is bad, were produced by the same evolutionary process. They, and so really, evolution doesn't give you a groundwork for saying that one is more natural or better than the other. They're both the products of this same process. And so if that's all there is, if your only standard is that things came about for their survival value, then who are we to criticize uh, someone who is acting according to what they're programmed to, to be their survival value? And so it's very hard to uh, say that one thing, one form of behavior is bad or good just based on Darwin's theory. Now, yes, you can say, well, there's some other transcendent theory by which we're judging these things, but that's the very thing that Darwinism denies. And so insofar as a theistic evolutionist says that, well, I can believe in traditional morality uh, and Darwinism, they're really not fully believing in Darwinism. They're really rejecting the Darwinian account of morality. And in fact, that's what Francis Collins does. Francis Collins says, oh, he believes in Darwinism, but when it comes to morality, he makes very clear that he doesn't actually accept the Darwinian account of morality. So uh, what you really find among the theistic evolutionists who claim that you can have Darwin ha and have your morality too, you can have your cake and eat it too, they're really not accepting Darwin's account of morality. And I think that's to their credit, but you need to recognize that they're carving out an exception that most Darwinian biologists, the vast majority of them, would not admit because it's not a principled exception. Darwin's theory by its very claims claims to be an all-encompassing explanation for how human beings came to be, and that both our moral beliefs and our behaviors are just as much the creature or, or the creation of unguided natural selection and survival of the fittest as anything else. 
And so for theistic evolutionists to ignore that is they're really making a sort of special pleading. They're saying, well, we're just going to carve out and say that Darwinism to us means uh, that it doesn't account for morality. Well, again, that's to their credit, but that's not Darwinism.